Waku abu diwa, waku heshi niwa niwewe. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Matthew 22, verse 19. As you do so, uh, you know, I can bring your attention to this banner we did at the beginning of the year. Living for Christ raising disciples who will disciple nations now our focus and our target was actually on the area of discipleship i realized the year is coming to an end with the disruptions and interference of all that we have gone through in terms of the corona issues um, uh, you know some things were slowed down but that is not an excuse Take me back to verse 17. I think I'm going to begin with 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, those words are many times referred to as the Great Commission. I've explained some of these things before. I put on, I put on a t-shirt today. You've never seen me in a t-shirt on Sunday, have you? Have you ever seen me in a t-shirt on Sunday? And I put on this t-shirt because of a message on it. I bought this t-shirt seven years ago during the burial ceremony of Dr. Miles Monroe in the Bahamas. I bought myself, Janet, and a few other t-shirts. And I think we gave some to friends. And there was a message on that t-shirt during that burial ceremony in Nassau. And it said, I think they just coined it. And they said, it's like Miles was saying, I'm finished. You can't see, you're too far. But it's like, I'm finished. Atieno, what are you saying? <laughs> it looks funny isn't it? it's a bit too big now so I'm finished now continue the, uh, the message on purpose and the kingdom I mean these t-shirts were sold like what do you call it hotcakes continue carry forward that's why I put on this t-shirt uh, to, to try and make our own share relevant this morning. The issue of discipleship. 
I had a story of a gentleman, I think I told you the story before, who used to drink alcohol, but he was a, a church member, Dr drank a lot. He was actually drinking a lot. It was hurting him. So the doctors took some of that very hot stuff, hot whiskey. They took a worm and dropped it there. And actually the drink killed the worm. They wanted to teach him what was happening to his stomach. So he was asked, what do you make out of this? And he said, I'm so happy. And they were interested in what he's happy about. He said, at least I know there are no worms in my stomach. <laughs> he, he, he did not see the danger, what that does to his body. He had not been discipled enough to understand some of those issues. In this country, there are so many things that are happening today. There are mothers in families. And these are people who go to churches. Husbands are killing wives and their children. If you look at the police, the rate at which things are happening, very strange things, in terms of murder and killing, you get amazed. And these are people who attend churches on Sunday morning. If you listen to the political rhetoric across the country today, and listen to what the politicians are saying about each other, and how they're bringing thousands of Kenyans together, irrespective of the COVID challenge, and the language used, and some of those things are spoken in the church. There is something wrong, there's something that is not going right with our discipleship process to the extent that we have people in the church who may not necessarily be disciples of Christ. Jesus did not say go and make followers. He did not say go and make converts. He did not even say go and make people who will attend church or fellowship. He said go and make disciples. And this is the challenge we have. The year is coming to an end. Since Corona began, most, I, I sit with pastors, I don't know about America, but in Kenya, the attendance of churches went to majorly 50-60%. We had a board meeting in Arabian on Friday, out of flight in Arabian on Friday morning. Missed, I couldn't even get a flight back. So one of our young men, Alex, in Nairobi, Ainea, came his car. So I drove by myself, called home at midnight. And the board meeting, one of the things we're discussing is these issues. The year is coming to an end. The nation is heading into, into some atmosphere in the coming year as the elections begin, as a, the election process begin to pick momentum. The question is, why are things happening the way they do? And yet, these people who do them are members of churches. The levels of corruption right now in our country are pretty high. And the people doing them are members of congregations. This boils back to the challenge of discipleship. And that challenge of discipleship is serious and critical. And I want to say a few things about it this morning. When I was growing up in the church, I think I've told you many, many times, there was this mzee called Aaron. Aaron walked with me as a teenager. I remember Aaron used to take me to meetings. I sat with Aaron. He read the Bible to me. The only Bible he had was, you know, most of our, our part of Luya land was, we were using Maragoli Bible. The Tirikis, the Maragolis, the, the Isuhas, the Idahos, whatever. We were sharing the Maragoli Bible. And that's all Aaron had. But he took special interest in me. We were many young people at church. But he took special interest in me walked with me and I'm glad that it happened that way. Until today, in the village, I'm counted as one of the members of his family. When they have a family matter, they also invite me. And it gave me a chance to overcome some of the issues that overcame some of my friends. 
Not all people who attend church on Sunday morning can be called disciples of Jesus. I try to put them in the categories. I don't know if you can give it to me. Those just attending church. There are those who are just attending church. They just attend. It, because it is Sunday morning, so they have to go to a church. It is Sunday morning. Maybe they grew up in church. So they have to find their way to some church. Some of them to the one closest to their, to their homes. There's another group, those beginning to know Jesus. They're just beginning to learn about Christ. They're just learning. They, they do not know too much. They're just beginning to learn about Jesus. Then there are those discipled, those being discipled and becoming mature. And I appreciate the youth department. I think the youth have a good discipleship program. Is Dan in? Okay, Dan was having a little thing. But the youth have very good discipleship program. I love what they are doing. And those young people are extremely serious. We invited life ministry. We did training from the brethren, the mature people. And I'm looking forward to fruit one day. That is a wise way of saying many things. So that those just being discipled. But then there are the mature who are discipling others. There are those who are mature. They have worked with God. They are now discipling others. They can tell you, I'm working with so and so. And helping them become what they're supposed to become. I have a team of 12. Some of them are here. I don't know who is here from my team. Can you stand if you're on my team? I saw Pastor Violet Sikulu. She le okay. Okay, I see. One, two, three. Those are part of my team. Huh? Four. And thank you very much. And these people, as we meet and talk, we actually we used to meet every Sunday for the last one year. We're meeting for one and a half hours in the lounge upstairs. And many of us have gone through changes because of that program. One of us, I, not, I didn't see him, uh, he works with AA. And AA normally assesses people uh, after a certain number of months in a year to find out who is the best performer. And he actually became the best performer nationally. He beat everybody across Kenya. And I, I, love, I love the fact that if you come to my team, we are doing a lot of good stuff. And right now there is a book. I've given them a book to summarize uh, on leadership. Just to read through and provide a summary. I don't know, is it six or seven chapters? And I'm accept, expecting a summary of uh, three pages. <laughs> what kind of summary is that going to be? I'm trying to get them to, to really think through. And I even gave them a very funny, funny book. I don't know if you, have, if you guys have, have, have even looked at it. The very old Machiavelli. Do you remember those things there? Written 300 something BC. There is a book called The Prince, which the late President Moi used to have on his desk all the time. And I gave them one of the books. Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the, uh, in the influence that has come to us from the back. And I'm, using, I'm saying that for a reason. I'm saying that for a reason. One of the reasons is that in that book, there are stories about Plato and, and, uh, and uh, what is his name again? He's, 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 uh, he's Manafunzi, Aristotle. Yeah? Plato had a lot of work he did. A lot of things he did. Philosophical things, he wrote them. But then Aristotle came took all of them, compiled them, and began to pick young people, and began to take what Plato had done, he began to make them into teachings to young people, so that what Plato had believed in could be transferred to young people, who could then transfer it to others. And you know the Greek influence in the world, even now, even democracy comes from there. I think I've told you many times. Their, their, their theology 
promoted, promoted uh, slavery. Just like apartheid, their theology did, the, did so. And you, if you take time and study, it goes back there. How can a person put together materials to catch young people so that they can be platonic, they can think of in terms of plateau, 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 all their lives? It's called discipleship. And that thing affected the world even up to now. I can't go into detail, details of some of those issues. This is why discipleship is critical, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot do without it. We come to Christ from different conditions. Some of us come after we have been messed up by life. Some of us come after life has hit us. We have done all sorts of things and we come to church. We cannot make ourselves disciples. We have to be mad. This statement that Jesus gives in Matthew 19, in Matthew 28, is not a suggestion. It's a command. You see suggestions, you can have them and do them when you feel like. This is not a suggestion. This is a command. A disciple, therefore, uh, is one who is a learner from another. Is a learner. I, I, I wrote so many things, I'm trying to see which are. If you look at the vines, there's this, this uh, book called The Vines. I like the way The Vines, he puts it. It's a learner, and he puts in Greek words, which I don't want to go into. He says, those words indicate thought accompanied by endeavor. A lot of thinking that is accompanied by endeavor. Ideas are given, endeavor is put in, work is put in to get this individual from the messy spiritual conditions and bring this individual to a place where they can actually represent Christ on this earth effectively. We talk about the disciples of John. You can see the scriptures of this. Disciples is there for one who follows one's teaching as the disciples of John. Matthew 9 verse 14 talks about the disciples of John came to him. Then the disciples of Pharisees, Matthew 22 verse 15, talks about the disciples of Pharisees. And of course, some of them called themselves the disciples of Moses. So they followed the teaching of John. The others followed the teaching of Pharisees. The other one said, for us, we just follow the teaching of Moses. So there is a teaching of somebody that they actually follow. Listen to what Hitler said. You know, listen, this is important. Hitler said, can you give it to me on the screen kindly? Okay, he said, he alone who owns the youth gains the future. Can you imagine that? He alone who owns the youth gains the future. What he meant is he is able, if he is able to get the youth, he can disciple them into what he wanted to see in the future. And you know what Hitler did in Europe and to the Jews? I'm saying this to bring your attention to this serious idea of discipleship. So if you look, if you look at the disciples of John, what was in John was passed over to them. Now I, I, was, I was looking at my study room the other day in, in my house and the, the, in a shelf up there, there is a, a tape duplicator. Do you remember tapes? <laughs> I still have a, a duplicator of tapes in my, in my house. And do you know, I actually bought it in America, carried it home those days. I remember there was a sister called who, Milka, Milka's sister to Lucy. Lucy, I don't know, where is Milka these days? She's still in Kenya. Okay. And Milka used to have that tape duplicator in, and she took it to town. And she used to duplicate tapes for people. And she used to make an average of a thousand shillings a day, duplicating tapes. 
Now, why am I saying that? There used to be one tape, I think even we still have them in, in, in our media here. We still have some of the old, old tapes. In my house, I have like a gunia, sack of tapes. In. So we had the one called the master. Remember that? So you put the master in the duplicator. The master runs and produces copies. And the copies actually contain what is on the master. Make sense? Even a CD. When you copy CD, what's the difference between the master in terms of message? The master and the copy. The message is the same, isn't it? Now, this is what we are talking about. <clears throat> the message of Jesus being passed on to the people that believe in him. What the master has being passed on to others. This is what I'm talking about by the issue of discipleship. Question. Are you a convert? Or are you a disciple? disciple what is the number what is the majority of people in the church are they disciples or are they just church attendees I would clearly say many people in the church are just attendees in the church they attend church very few have been discipled effectively so that they can also reflect the character of Jesus in our generation when the word disciple is used for Jesus, it means several things. One, in a wide sense of the Jews who became his adherents. The Bible gives us verses where those who became the Jewish people who began to follow Jesus, the Bible refers to them as disciples. Give us John 6, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Those were Jewish people who had actually uh, begun to follow Jesus. Take us back. Now, no. In terms of Jesus, I'll appreciate. If you take us to Jesus, that's where I am at. And so when you look at it, it so those Pharisees, the Jewish people had become adherents. Uh, who had begun to follow Jesus were actually his disciples. Number two there is a reference to the 12 apostles. The 12 apostles who were disciples became apostles are referred to as disciples. So when you talk about the disciples of Jesus, it also talks about the 12. Now I want you to look at, remember this, he walked with them. He spent time with the 12. He met the crowds but the 12th, he spent time with them. Because he knew the future of the church needed a people who understood what he was saying and doing. Now look, look at these people and see where they were coming from. The 12 fishermen, illiterate. Peter was very funny. The guy was not learned at all. The guy spent time with the fish. Paul comes by day. Peter walks with Jesus and does all that. In normal sense, you could think that Peter is the one who could write most of the New Testament. That's why going to school is not a bad thing. Huh? He writes very two small letters. <laughs> then he says, hey, what Paul writes is very complicated. Jesus walked with them from being fishermen tax collectors, different professions. He walked with them and all of them were willing to die for him. All of them. They were willing to die because of what they had received from him. And you know that's how, that's how many of them died. Killed. They said we better die than refuse to follow. Christ. Thirdly, all who claim and manifest that they are his disciples by abiding in his word, those are called disciples of Jesus. 
those who claim to manifest and, and manifest not just claim but manifest they claim and manifest that they are his disciples by abiding in his word they abide in his word their decisions their actions whatever they do in this life is based on the word of God they have come from their backgrounds whether they are sorcery witchcrafts or whatever or whether they are confused conditions whatever they have come from there walked with God until they have reached a place where the word of God is the primary thing in their lives so if they have to make any decision if they have to make any choice then the choice is made not based on basically human advice only although it is important but also based on the word of God they are not willing to violate scripture these are people that's why the Bible says in John 8 verse 31 then Jesus said to those to those Jews who believed him if you abide in my word you are my disciples you are my, my disciples what? indeed he didn't finish the sentence by saying you are my disciples he said you are my disciples indeed which gives you emphasis you are not just my disciples you are my disciples indeed have you ever used the word indeed when do you use it to emphasize isn't it to put emphasis on what you're saying and Jesus says if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed I have a burden this morning and this burden is are we abiding in the word are we disciples or are we just converts or are we just attendees of a church service on Sunday where I come from there are people who are members of church they don't attend but they pay everything because when they die the first thing the church will do is to check the books did he tithe yes was he giving this and that yes attending church was not even an issue to them but as long as you're okay with the books then they bury you that is not what I'm talking about I'm talking about coming to a, a realization that you are a child of God and you need to be able to move forward with him number four in the book of Acts of those who believed upon him and confessed him in the book of Acts we meet a lot of incidences where people came believed on Jesus and accepted him as their Lord and Savior let's look at two of them Acts 6 verse 1 and 2 and verse 7 now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying there arose a complaint against the Hebrew Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said it is not desi desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables verse 7 then the word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith a great many of them were obedient to the faith some of them were even following him even when Jesus was alive some were secret disciples they believed in him but now in the book of in the, in the Acts of Apostles we see that after they gave out responsibilities to the brethren serving the tables distributing food and they said they wanted to remain with the important matters which I call I, I look at them as their values value number one to them was prayer value number two was the word of God and so they said let us get help to distribute bread but leave us with the word and leave us with prayer two things they wanted to remain with the word and prayer as a result of that 
the number of disciples multiplied. The, the church, the word of Jesus began to grow and to expand in Jerusalem. The problem was they began to set what my friend used to call Jerusalem Settlement Scheme. Um, he was using that at a friend, I think he's with the AIC. It's called Gibet. We used to be together in Dana Diambo's ministry. And he used to say that they began to set up Jerusalem Settlement Scheme. Jesus said go, but they began to settle in a scheme. So what did he do? Because he, he allowed trouble to come and they were scattered. The scattering was not demonic. It was for them to take the word of God as far as possible. So you, you discover that that is something that you want to think about. I've tried to give you examples so that you can see we are not trying to talk about something that is new. We're talking about something that must be done. So um, those who came in the book of Acts and accepted Jesus, they actually became disciples of Christ. I want to take your attention back to the text. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. I want you to remember this was the last meeting Jesus had when he summoned them to come to him and give them this mandate before he was taken up to heaven. And listen to what he says. Go therefore. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. I want to, I don't want to go into baptizing them. Uh, there is a material I'm working on which I think I would like us to really get into. Janet was asking me, what is God saying about next year? <laughs> Are we discovering that God is quiet? He's saying, keep on. Even yourself in your own life, when you pray over a matter and you, you, you're not seeing an answer from God, and you're saying, God, what is going on? Give me an answer. One of the things, I may not have all the answers, of course, but one of the things to think about at that point is that maybe the Lord is saying, let it be the way it is for now. Something is working out. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look, I'm looking into this matter extremely seriously. This year, corona, corona interfered with many things, but we are going to go into serious, serious discipleship work. All right? My team, you know, we are meeting, and I'm going to be meeting my team. Once we finish what you are doing, with their teams. Because they are also taking it to others. So we want to take this further and further. Now, the first thing I want us to look at is the word go. Our time is pretty short this morning, so I'll try to be brief. Go. And I'm saying that this, this is the last meeting Jesus had with them. I told them, go and wait for me. And, um, uh, and he met them. I want to say that God ex desires to see real transformation right now in our societies. God is looking forward to change and transformation. And so Jesus is saying to them, go. As he's saying to us, go. As God wants to see transformation, God chooses to use people. And he's saying, go. 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 I want to emphasize what I said earlier. In view of the authority Jesus had received, in view of the power given to him, he's telling them, now, in view of this power, go. Go make disciples remember John 17 when you get time read John 17 he took, he, he, the prayer he was making he said the glory you gave me I've given to them just as you sent me have I sent them that's what he was telling God the Father in that prayer and at this point he's addressing them and he's telling them go and he has already prayed before you were going on the cross and told the Father, the glory you gave me, I've given to them. The way you sent me, as you sent me, so send I them. Same way. The way he was sent, are we sent. 
the glory he was given are we given this is not just to carry around and feel good this is not just to sustain you in good health and have a good job and have a good family those are all good but this is meant for you to be able to make disciples turn some people from being crooked into being instruments of honor in the hands of God go go God has chosen to use humanity he has chosen to use human beings to accomplish his will there are things which will only change when you help somebody change some families will only change because you helped a member of that family to change some villages will only change because you took a step to get a villager and show him the way of God disciple him into being a follower of Jesus Christ and the influence of this particular individual became great enough to see great things happening I'm glad whenever I go home in the village I'm completely excited of the work God enabled us to do after attending a Morrisville School of Ministry I told you that 1983 we began prayer work at home we began evangelism young men got born again things began to happen when I go home now I can choose which church to attend those days it was very very hard to find a church that could preach in Swahili forget about English and today in the same area I can give you a number of people now preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ one of them I think two of them are pastors two or three are pastors in Nairobi I met one the other day I said where are you he said I'm preaching in I don't know Busia or where they are matured some of you know Bishop Azango here product of all that we've seen them from nothing because 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 I, I, I attended a conference and Dr. Ness taught a lot about the tabernacle and I saw myself how can I help people went to the village took action I was not even funded I was not even driven I used to go home every month even when I went to teach in Mombasa Poly I used to travel from Mombasa Polytechnic to Shinyalu every month for about a year to go and strengthen the fellowships today we are many many preachers out of that arrangement go I want to appeal to you begin to set your mind to go and make disciples are you with me I pray that each one of us is going to have a burden to go and make disciples I pray that even those of you who feel so fearful who feel so scared who feel like you don't even know what to do you don't even know where to start we will help you know where to start go make disciples number two he says make I, I took pick those words because of the importance did you do you realize recently there were two prison escapees in in which, which prison was that the bad boys committee there were three two of them from Mumias my God Mumias Jesus <laughs> Faith what do we do where is mother Faith what is going on in Mumias two of them from Mumias I mean these boys have been radical Colized, discipled one of them somewhere was it Nyanza Explore, I mean killed himself Nyakach I mean the fellow is so discipled that he believes if he kills you and kills himself he will go to heaven and some gifts are waiting what are they many things are waiting for them they are so radicalized so convinced 
so trained until in their minds they believe killing for their God so to speak is a good thing how many Christians can stand for the cause of Christ just like that this statement go I said earlier is an imperative it's a crucial authoritative command we cannot play with it we cannot take it so lightly judge come for a prayer meeting attend a ladies meeting attend a youth meeting no this thing goes beyond even what was announced here about morning glory prayer is a means to an end Jesus died for souls we have to go into discipleship people cannot disciple themselves babies cannot take themselves to the bathroom babies cannot shower by themselves babies cannot feed themselves somebody must feed them in whichever way whether it is the way you do it now with the or the way my mother did it my mother did it my mother was strange she would come from the farm she has not even washed her hands sit down put her hand here close your nose put uji on her hand my friend you have to take it and we didn't die we are here thank you mama wherever you are hallelujah so we need to go and make disciples people cannot make themselves there's a statement i i put in my notes up uh, the last sentence on that um by the way discipling before the last statement disciple discipling it, it's a verb yeah it's a verb take, take me back to the bullet before that it's a word of action it's a process it's a daily activity it's not something we're just to make up we're not making it a program it is something we must do now my last statement on that point before i go to the last one is this discipling is done with others to others for others what is that right there it's done with others to others for others again with others whatever but it, it involves other people and this is a serious matter we need to do let me close with this our considerations there are things i would like us to consider from now henceforth as we close 2021 there are things i want to request you to think about to consider one register that without doing it some people will remain weak and productive and abandon the faith whatever you do we have to recognize that if we do not do discipleship there are people in the church who will remain weak always backsliding not growing up if we don't do this some people will remain weak they will remain unproductive and they will even abandon the faith that's when you hear sister so and so has done this brother so and so has done this and you wonder you mean this one yes they have been in the church for long but they're not discipled so they do things you cannot understand some of them cannot even give an offering to god some cannot give their tithes to god some cannot support the needy some cannot be serious about ministry some backslide too there'll be delays in reaching the world with the gospel because most christians are immature and do not share their faith with others neither do they make themselves available to be discipled um, if i let you write all this it's already 10 o'clock we're supposed to have closed but this is what i mean there, there will be delays in reaching the world with the gospel of christ there will be delays if we do not disciple there will be delays daystar university did a research in towns in kenya most of the towns in kenya less than 10 percent of the people go to church on sunday morning they are watching tv reading the newspapers what is in the newspapers is what they watched in the news last night 
because the church is not giving them answers to their issues and there's going to be a delay that delay can be extremely expensive for the cause of Christ number three we need to have a clear picture in our minds of heaven and hell as realities and destination of all humans in our minds we must have the picture that there is a heaven and there is a hell that the Bible does not lie the Russians will spend time in eternity with the Lord sinners will spend time in eternity with the enemy these are your cousins your brothers your sisters your neighbors in in the estate where you live these are people you work with you spend time with some of them you you do business with and they are going to hell as you watch Jesus said if you cannot confess me before people I will not confess you before God and his angels we cannot be embarrassed about the gospel we have to be bold courageous in the God we believe and share our faith with others I was watching I think I showed you the clip when we were doing a, one of our classes this Nigerian preacher who rose from the dead when Bonga was in Nigeria and what he had gone through there are too many things on YouTube but that one I listened it was on TBN um, some years ago it went worldwide and this guy who died three days had fought, had fought with his wife he's a pastor and how he went to heaven and what he saw and came he was told to go back but he said please hell is not a place to go nobody should go there you can google it 2001 it's called Daniel I think when you get time just listen to his story he, he resurrected in a basement when Bonga was preaching up in the church yeah yeah we have the links I mean I, 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 listened, I watched that thing on TBN some years ago I couldn't believe it hell is real heaven is real your friends will end either in either of them if we do not disciple that's where, that's where these are going to be next we need a passion for growth and maturity in the body of Christ we need a passion for the growth and the maturity of the body of Christ we need a passion we cannot just continue to be normal ordinary watching things coming on Sunday going to business from Monday there has to be a passion to see people mature and preach the gospel yesterday I went for a funeral you know sister Pam the father was being buried yesterday so I drove to Kakameka uh, and I met a gentleman I met many years ago he lives in Nairobi and he said he watches us and he said I, I, I like listening to your son Dan and he, he, he told me some things I, I, I love listening to Dan I follow him on YouTube so I said you're not following me you're following Dan <laughs> he said no no not me I like Dan so I said why he said that boy communicates things which make sense to me I don't know which things he communicates <laughs> I mean I was we, we, you see another one called me and said oh no, I think Shana too told me that. That this boy is going to, to defeat to beat his father in in ministry. Hey. <laughs> Victor, what is going on here? These young people are heading somewhere, isn't it? Every good father should be glad to see a child do better than him or her, isn't it? You should be able to do that. And I'm blessed by that. But what I'm trying to say is there is a level of maturity. But you see, you should have seen how I worked with my kids. How I've worked with Dan, even Joy, the journey at home. Before Joy left to America, we had a, a date every Sunday afternoon. We missed some of those dates. She was reminding me the other day, Daddy, please, our date. And she said, We write a letter by handwriting. We give it to the pastor to take to her. She wants a letter from me, another from Janet, handwritten, to give to her pastor to deliver. I hope you'll carry it. 
Now what do I write there? The day you were born, my only girl. <laughs> oh, I, I saw the world opening. Oh, come on, let's go. We need a passion. We need a fire. We need something burning in us for somebody else to do the work of the ministry. We need to see a fire in us that I can see somebody do the ministry better than I can do it. That I can sit down and somebody can preach. I'm heading to a place where I, I want to be an elder in this church. Not, not the pastor. I'm not going to get the microphone in the too. I'll just be preaching and go to the office. All the problems come to the younger generation. As I close, and close, we need to believe that God can use us to change the world. There must be a level of faith. Faith that you can be used of God. Faith that you can make a difference. Faith that God can use you with your weakness, with your weariness, with your challenges, there ought to be faith in you that God can use you to make a difference. There ought to be faith in you that you can look back and see a multitude of people you raised up, you molded, and they became serious Christians just because of you. That faith needs to be there. Pastor, I don't know. I've not tried before. This is a season to try. I don't know where to start. There is a place to start. I don't have the courage. The Holy Spirit gives you courage. The lion of the tribe of Judah lives in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Are you with me? For the older people, if you're finding it difficult, go and learn from these young people. They are very effective discipleship groups. Are you too mature to serve God? Do you think you are so learned? Do you think you're so rich? Do you think you're so blessed? Do you think you're so high that making disciples is a bother to you? If that's what you think, I want you to think about the price Jesus paid on the cross for you. What is holding you down? What is making you not make disciples? Which excuse will you give or can you give or would you like to give? What is your reason? What is your explanation? Why would you not do it? I pray that this morning, as you leave this service, you will leave with this in mind. Lord, make me a disciple-making Christian. Hallelujah. That as you leave this service, you can go home and tell God, how long will I just be attending church? I want to see people come to you through my hands. Oh God, can you stand on your feet to make a prayer this morning? Only to me you opened a view. Napenda kufana na na we. Is that a song? Yes. Is that a song that sounds like that? Is this there? Yes. Can you try? You know it? Yes. Okay, let's try it. Yes. Oh, you don't know it? We know it. Yes. Napenda kufana na na we. Yes. Napenda kufana na na we Only to me e upenda vyo Napenda kufana na na we Napenda kufanya nini? 
destroy it. Yes, na penda kufana na nawe. Yes, uwe, na penda kufana na nawe. Only to me, you bend up your one more time, yes, Lord. Yes, Only to me, you bend up your could you just take a minute and tell God deliver me from anything Please, our time is gone I don't want to interfere with many things but deliver me from anything that is going to stand before me against me and block me and obstruct me from being a disciple maker please open that mouth even with your mask on and talk to the Lord No, none of us is too big for Jesus. None of us is too rich for Jesus. None of us is too learned for Jesus. None of us is too exposed for Jesus. None of us is too high for him. The life you have is a gift from him. pray this morning at times Lord we we find ourselves using time just the way we want at times we forget it's a gift you've given us and how we use it is our gift back to you at times we have schedules and programs that are so demanding they put pressure on us and the systems of this world established by those who control events those who control the job markets those who control whatever else that affects our lives Lord they are made it in a way that we just don't seem to have the time we repent and ask you for forgiveness for submitting ourselves to systems that you say do not love them. We ask your Father to open our eyes. Illuminate deep, deep within us your very light to come to the realization that if we do not do discipleship, if we do not make disciples, your course on earth will be delayed. And this is an embarrassment. Forgive us. Can you just take a minute and ask God to forgive us as a church for not caring? Just take a prayer to God. Forgive us for not caring. We have not even cared about the lost. I know our time is gone, but just bear with me for a few minutes.
Oh God. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for not even caring. Some of our neighbors, we pass by them as we come to church as if they don't matter. They have not refused to come to worship. We have not even invited them. Jesus. Friends, as I make this prayer, please re remember, God only answers prayer that is made. God answers prayer that is made. If we do not pray for the lost, there will be no answer for the lost. God only answers prayer that is made. How many of you are praying for struggling brothers and sisters? Those who are struggling in faith. Those who are backsliding and coming back. Those who are lukewarm. Those who are... Even those who are lost, they don't know Jesus. We have not cared about them. And that's why they are still lost. Because we have not even prayed for them. We pray for so many things. Except the lost. God only answers prayer that is made. Lord, prepare me to, to be sanctuary, Lord, pure and holy, tried and true, so true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a For you. So Father, we pray that as we go reflecting this week, do not allow us to settle on excuses of any kind, however genuine they look. Whatever blocks evangelism, blocks discipleship, it does not matter how genuine it is. It is wrong. It is completely wrong. So Lord, I pray that every man and woman in this service today will re disciple people out of messed lives and clean them up and let them have a passion for you. For faith works even this morning. To you be glory and honor in Jesus' name. Let's say amen. Thank you.